Nucleophilic additions to ketones and aldehydes may be carried out under acidic or basic conditions. Basic conditions typically involve the use of a very strong nucleophile, something like a carb anion or hydrogen anion resembling reagent, like a Grignard reagent, or those complex metal hydrides that we've seen previously. And under these conditions, nucleophilic addition occurs directly to the neutral carbonyl group. So for example, when a Grignard reagent is used, we can actually think of this as more or less ethyl anion, and that anion can add to the carbonyl carbon to give an alkoxide intermediate. And this is heavily favored because we're essentially shifting negative charge from a carbon to an oxygen in this step. And then to get the neutral product out, we treat with water or sometimes with a weak acid, and proton transfer to that alkoxide oxygen gives the neutral alcohol. So this is a typical mechanism under basic conditions where the first step is nucleophilic addition and the second step is proton transfer. Under acidic conditions, we essentially flip the script. And this is typical of much weaker nucleophiles, alcohols, amines, and thiols, for example, where we often need an acid catalyst to get the reaction to go at an appreciable rate in addition to the nucleophile itself. And under these conditions, thanks to the acid catalyst, proton transfer occurs first. This is what I mean by flip the script. We protonate the carbonyl oxygen, which is a decent base, and end up at this very important reactive intermediate, protonated carbonyl. This has two resonance forms, one with positive charge on oxygen and one with positive charge on carbon. And this second resonance form really emphasizes that this carbon is now a great electrophile, right? It's a carbocation, essentially, resonance stabilized carbocation, but still very, very reactive. And so it's susceptible to attack by even weak nucleophiles like alcohols through a nucleophilic addition step. And this leads to a product in which there's a new CO bond through nucleophilic addition. And then typically here we lose that proton to get back to a neutral product. And often this will react further. We'll find that under the acid catalysis conditions, this can be protonated again and do further chemistry. So the important point for now though, is to contrast with the basic case, proton transfer occurs first under acidic conditions. Nucleophilic addition follows, and then if an acid catalyst is involved, which is quite common, we often lose that proton to get back to a neutral structure. This slide makes the point that nucleophilic additions may be reversible or irreversible. Irreversible reactions are heavily thermodynamically favored such that they can't go backwards. And this is common when our nucleophile is very strong. For example, an anion of an element with low electronegativity like carbon or hydrogen or an organometallic reagent. These add to the carbonyl carbon and then they get stuck. So here, for example, this addition of ethyl Grignard to kick off the ethyl anion is not a reasonable proposal, right? Since we'd be going from negative charge on an oxygen atom in the alkoxide intermediate to negative charge on a carbon atom after that elimination. So after the nucleophilic addition in the forward direction, there's no going back. This is an example of an irreversible nucleophilic addition reaction. When the nucleophile is much weaker, addition may be reversible. So HCl, for example, is a good example of this. Protonation of the carbonyl oxygen occurs and chloride can add to the carbonyl carbon, but chloride is a pretty weak nucleophile and a pretty awesome leaving group. So beta elimination of chloride, which gets us back to the protonated carbonyl and chloride, is something that can occur readily. And so at equilibrium, we would expect appreciable amounts of both the carbonyl or protonated carbonyl intermediate and the compound here in which HCl has added. This is a reversible nucleophilic addition. And many nucleophilic additions of relatively weak nucleophiles are reversible, and we can control the product formed by using either an excess of the nucleophile or an excess of water. So, for example, if we look at this reaction, if we start by looking from right to left, we'll see that this involves the addition of a nitrogen nucleophile, an amine, to the carbonyl carbon. And ultimately, with the loss of water, we end up with a CN double bond. We'll dig into the details of this reaction a little bit later. For now, the thing to notice is that water is a byproduct from right to left. If we use an excess of water together with an acid catalyst, and the acid catalyst, by the way, is also needed for the reverse direction, we can get the nucleophile back and the carbonyl compound back. And so it's possible to hydrolyze these products of reaction of weak nucleophiles with ketones and aldehydes back to the carbonyl compound 
and the nucleophile, which is pretty nice. However, this only works for relatively weak nucleophiles. Alcohols, thiols, amines are the three most important classes. This will not work, for example, if you try to treat an alcohol like this with acid and water. Absolutely nothing is going to happen, right? We're not going to get the carbonyl compound back. This slide summarizes the major classes of nucleophiles that we'll encounter in this unit. The three major classes of heteroatom nucleophiles are oxygen nucleophiles, water, alcohols, diols, for example, sulfur nucleophiles, thiols, and nitrogen nucleophiles, amines. These all add reversibly. We will also look at hydrogen and carbon nucleophiles. And one thing to note about hydrogen nucleophiles is that these are the complex metal hydride reagents that we've seen previously in the course. And so the reduction reactions of ketones and aldehydes that we've previously seen are nucleophilic addition reactions. And we're going to return to those to draw a connection between these reactions, which were absolutely rever uh, irreversible and heavily favored, and reactions of carbon nucleophiles. Carbon nucleophiles are found in organometallic reagents, and these act like carbanions, similar to the H minus, quote unquote, that we spotted in these complex metal hydride reagents, we'll look for C minus atoms in organometallic reagents like Grignard reagents, for example. We'll also examine cyanide as an important carbon-based nucleophile and phosphonium illids. Now this is a funky looking structure that I won't say much about for the time being, but these are critical for the Wittig reaction and allow us to convert a carbonyl group in a ketone or aldehyde into an alkene, which has great synthetic utility.